The 2023 Play vs. Cup continues with Smash Bros. Ultimate, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Joining me is Hail Monkey Man from the bottom of the screen to the top now currently. Hail Monkey Man, welcome back to the stream. Hey, thank you so much, man. We're going into the awesomeness of this Play vs. Cup 2023 Western Regional High School Championship. Trying to see who is the West, uh, what the best of the West, if, if as it is. But this is going to be a heck of a matchup. Super Smash Brothers, look, sign me up all day long. The national championship as well. Your chance to solidify your title on the national championship. Make sure that too, you let the other individuals know that you are a champion indeed. Of course, this is for the spring semester. We have the fall coming up as well. So make sure you get in on the action. Enroll for the fall 2023 season. It is now open. And discover the opportunities that Play Versus offers. And get all the details on the upcoming fall season at playversus.com. That is play V S V as in Victor S as in Sam dot com. Don't just watch play with all of us, right? We're, <laughs> we're ready to play some Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Kind of run us run to the matchup that we'll see here in the Western region. Well, let's check out the pathway of what these two teams took as it's going to be Alta High School out in Utah versus Allen High School over in Texas. I'm not kidding when I say. Allen High School is one of the biggest high schools, largest population, has one of the most gigantic football stadiums in the entirety of the state. So they have a plethora of people and talent and students to pull from. Alta High School, though, they've been making a stellar run as well as they're able to take down Mountain Ridge. And I think they were the lower seed into that. So interesting to see how both these teams play out. But it's been Alta who was Perfect through the regular season, perfect through the playoffs, and is trying to perfect that run. But they're going against a squad in Allen High School. I mean, they dropped all of one match in the regulars, and they're trying to be able to take it here in this Western region. Plus, they played 16 matches as well, in I addition. Know. So that's a lot more matches, uh, less, uh, more opportunities for failure, and yet they failed very little. Also, they did not fail to bring individuals from the chat as well. I see people blowing up for the Hawks here in chat as they are in support here but uh, let's hear who you have Alta versus Allen High in the chat we want to hear it from you uh, Hail Monkey Man we'll get to learn these teams here very shortly and we're gonna might be able to see an Incineroar right off the bat as well Oh, very well. But hey, let's check out uh, a little bit of an extra word from play versus as uh, we get into yes. it let's, let's let's see what they got in store for us as we get in store for these teams When I went to go get my program started, I did a lot of research on what companies people were using at the high school level with regards to playing esports. I found a few of them, but I found that Play Versus not only had some of the best reviews, but had just had just had high praise from people in this in this sphere of high school esports. So naturally, while there are other people in the state, I chose to keep going with Play Versus. So we chose to exclusively work with Play Versus because they just, they offer a, a large variety of games and they offer a large variety of games that our students get behind constantly every season. They're trying, they're trying, they're trying to either innovate, bring more games in, uh, be more communicative. They're a small company, but they try really hard and I obviously really appreciate that. I think Play Versus catalog is what sets them apart from everybody else. Everybody else can offer small things or even tournaments related. Uh, to the game and title that they want to play with. And so I think that the idea that I can build an entire season around a specific title is really enticing. Set number one is set to begin, Hail Monkey Man. And we have our first matchup listed now. So it's going to be Incineroar facing off with Joker. So Incineroar, very, very dominant character. And very good off the grabs and punishing accordingly against Joker, who will be more of a rushdown type. Yeah, this is going to be a difference of consistency of getting combos off, especially out of Joker, who really kind of sits into that speed sort of category. You see him kind of go along the likes of Fox and Pikachu. But, I mean, when you got Incineroar, you're playing into more of that heavy set. You got the Bowsers, you got the Ganondorfs, much like the DKs. Incineroar, they can, they're, they're meant for wrestling, for getting hands on you. So it's going to be up 
chew this this Joker pick out of Kivo to really get in and do some damage and not allow Kingston any kind of footing because with it, I mean, especially with a character like Incineroar, it is meant to absolutely just kind of get you to the chest, squeeze you out, and just punish you for being there in the first place. Yeah, the grabs and follow-ups is something to watch, but also the aerials are pretty strong too. If you're kind of caught in that juggle, you're going to have a difficult time, but luckily if Joker is the speed character that can get around that. I believe maybe that's a one of the reasons why they were able to, to pick and try and get around it too. Plus, uh, you want to avoid the side B too by jumping you don't want to uh, dive right in otherwise you know you are going to pay for it that side be uh very dangerous from incineroar but joker uh you know you pick your poison do you want to go up right you do you want to jump because then you are vulnerable on that end of things but i think joker is the right pick here because uh, if you connect very strongly they're going to be off the map pretty quickly yeah, I mean, we see that out of those types of characters because you, you basically go from zero to full stock in a matter of moments. But hey, it's up to you guys as well. A little bit of extra crowd noise helps these teams really kind of get that extra vibe going. We've got Hawks and we've got Eagles. It is a bird fight, which, you know, you're talking about maybe the short jumps, maybe just a little bit of extra juggling. It could be an aerial combat, which comes just in the uh, same way that these flocks of birds will be trying to find us out. So we're going to be going into the lobby very soon and just, if you're just now joining us, well, first off, welcome. But our format dictates that we will be having a best of set here, uh, Bear. And, you know, that could be as quickly as just a couple of uh, fast sweeps and these best of five between these rosters. Yeah, it, it's been seen over the regular season, so it's not, uh, you know, we're not all strangers to it, but these are going to be best of fives, though, moving into these sets versus the best of three scenario that we've seen in the past. So that opens up more time, uh, space to make adjustments if you need to, especially if a, com a player is getting very comfortable with a particular character. I think that's something that you want to kind of roll off their uh, confidence a little bit and try to find a different combo, a different counter, if you will, uh, going up against your opponent's. I think that switches are definitely uh, risky because you do end up switching styles completely. But I do like the, the fact that they are able to open up that with this best of five scenario for all of these sets. And this is also going to be a fun map because it's fairly balanced. We're going to be going over to Battlefield for the first stage. Nice. So this one, yeah, it's, it's yeah. one of my favorites. I mean, you go over there. I, you know, we, we love a bit of Pokemon Stadium, but I also just hit me on Battlefield just bring it to me. I believe that one actually has three stage. So we're going to be seeing some outboard movement as well when we go to center. And we're not going to have too much distance fighting in this. This isn't just kind of plink them with a laser, hit them with magic. No, this is going to be one of your regular get in your face and really take the extra combos to them kind of fight. Incineroar, I mean, it's interesting how that, that particular Pokemon has kind of evolved from being as strong as they were in meta. I think like at least two gens ago from, you know, base Pokemon game over to smash they just couldn't ignore the wrestler type and they're just like you know what come on you're invited too we want to see what you can do but it's a weird cross kind of pollination as joker is coming in is more meant for stealth but you know the 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 character themselves can be super fast and that's going to be the tough thing to get around yeah don't let that bar get up either otherwise you are going to catch a punch in the face that you don't want, right <laughs> so be careful with that i also like how incineroar in mewtwo somehow avoided the pokemon on trainer as well they're just on their own now representing themselves that's how strong and dominant they can be so incineroar again it's going to be dangerous up close but luckily Co uh, joker does have that in and out speed as well and you're going to use that as a rush uh rush down character type so again a lot more entertaining perhaps than we've seen in the past where we do see zoner is trying to hold back into sam is something of that uh something of those sorts so uh, it'll be fun to watch the pace of play in which these uh characters dump uh are able to go back and forth with one another and those smash attacks are going to be what we watch for to send them packing because uh, obviously the stock count is one that you want to drain through uh, with both of these characters. Of course, and, and if you guys get confused when it comes to uh, the names at the bottom, we will, in fact, have all Alta High School uh, players on one account. So I was going to say Alta E Hawks out there, but we're going to go here into game number one. And, of course, you do have the three larger platforms here on Battlefield. So if seeing what difference can be made, it's all about positioning early on. And, and right now, it's just about being able to make that final connection. And the, it, it's going to be up to uh, Kivo to be able to build up that meter onto Joker, but early Early uh, positioning really is in favor of Alta as they bring the Incineroar over and just really not let him have free space. 
Already hitting the side B because Joker doesn't really play vertically as frequently. But you have to be careful here as that, that bar is already up, which means that they're going to have that extra help, that extra hand behind them. And in that edge guard, they can sh <laughs> kind of shock you with the throw, too. But uh, hasn't been able to do that because Incineroar is showing why you are a dominant character and taking the first stock with only 14 percentage given up. Oh, so much damage can be done in such a short amount of time. Great grab. They're able to just kind of bounce juggle them. But again, the up kick is going to be here as well. And taking turns bodying one another. Such a burst of damage can come out of Incineroar. Great dodge as they're just going for quick side A. And as you do have this angelic form, they're playing from well off stage. Oh, oh and oh, oh. what a... What a confirm. Be able to get him just straight from underneath. This is a precarious position right now as Alan is trying to fight back from this deficit. Quick switch up as well. And so there's been a couple of times that we've seen the forward air that lands whenever you have Joker charged up. That's been uh, kind of catching Incineroar by surprise. That's a, a grab to get back on stage too, which Joker, of course, very strong in that department. But the problem is you bring uh, a, probably 200 pounds towards you whenever you do end up <laughs> landing that move. And then Incineroar in your face with that grab combo is always so deadly. Oh man, so you got 147 and just really been able to keep them on the ropes as any good wrestler does, but also good wrestlers know how to have a bit of showmanship. Oh, what a dive oh. splattering on your screen, oh. Moby Joker. What a return to the stage. A burst justice now send them down to their last stock. Oh, and again, going to the side B, the down B, every B, the smashes are just happening in a uh, sequence. And it continues to land here at two. 38% already has the one stock advantage too, but at the 103 mark, you're never out of it, especially as a Joker, which you get stronger as the uh, as the map goes on. Oh my goodness, yeah. This, that's when you take that secondary form and you do have such a bonus right now, getting uh, Joker all the way up into 87 percentile. And this one could be finished just as quickly as they're looking for that same connection. Oh, and it's the return. They're gonna be sent just nearly all the way to the blast zone, waiting from off the edge, seeing if there was a neutral come up for him off of corner. And then just right back to center, trying to again use that down kick just to be able to finish him off. It won't quite get him. Looking for another grab. Put them back to the ropes, and this is going to be a bad position. They do recover, looking for the meteor smash, and now just to be able to finish them off. What a grab. That'll be final smash, and that's going to go with two stocks left. First points over to Alta. Again, you can't play that horizontally. You have to play vertically whenever the side B comes out from Incineroar. That high percentage to you, it's a very difficult maneuver around, and uh, even a shield won't really help you in that uh, scenario. So you have to continuously be aware of that and jump at the right time, which means that your anticipation has to be on point, and it was very difficult. Incineroar did a great job on the edges, too. The edge guards were no match for that uh, recovery efforts and uh, the slam down that we we saw multiple times on the edge of the stage so uh you have to find ways around it because right now you're being bested by just the smashes alone i mean incinero has so much more in the kit to use and hasn't had to even use it yet so it's definitely back to the drawing board and hopefully alan can come back with something that's a little bit stronger yeah, honestly, I th th we were talking uh, a, a bit ago, like way, way back about how do you keep into a, your same character? Do you switch right. it up? And I often say, all right, is character v. character. You do have player v. player as well. And that maybe it gives a sign of nervousness. I would hard set away from uh, j mostly because I'm just not a Joker main. But j when, it <laughs> came, when it came to this, you had a two stock diff and it did not look like Kingston was breaking a single sweat. That was a king upon their throne looking very comfortable on it and it was just pure control laterally just taking you straight from end to end of the ring and battering and bruising you so i would think hey you got a secondary main let's switch this one up or just go same category maybe change up uh bring in a fox if you can maybe even a falco because i think that one has a little bit more of the hitting power consistently could be to, but you just getting paws on you from that incineroar that was honestly the, the biggest issue yeah, I'd like to see the the Falco more so so than the Fox, just because the um you know the landing you can kind of switch up a little bit. You're yeah. stuck in the air a little bit longer, but air is where you need to be in in against this in Incineroar uh, from time to time, unless he's coming directly at you with that slam down, which you saw a couple of times on the edges. But um, that would also allow you know 
less of that B smash, which seems to be the go-to pretty frequently. So when you've been bested, you got to find different uh, approaches here, and otherwise you're going to be slammed in out of this one before you know it. Yeah, and on, uh, also I will take all the ads in the chat and otherwise from saying, hey, that Joker didn't work because you know what? It, it does just a kind of preferential, but it does look like they are confident enough to go right back into it. We didn't get to see much or too many good tendencies out of uh, Allen High School from that first bout. It's going to be Kibo that has to really adapt and, and overcome into this one, especially because Kingston just has a very, very methodical and very clinic driven incineroar. And I think that they're going to just have to run away from the holds. I mean, they're a wrestler type, so they're going to get paws on you no matter what we do. But we're going to go over to Kalos. So a bit more open space those those kind of mid-tier platforms maybe they just gave too much di uh difficulty to kind of navigate around the map and maybe more open space really does give joker at least a hint of dip and joker does have some good aerial speed too but again just gets caught by that uh, b constantly it's just over and over again if it's not broken don't fix it right and that's what ult is thinking right now and, and being able to put on this damage early but that being said uh still got 64 on the incineroar prior to and it's charged up to the point where they can use that tag team ability and uh, take it to Incineroar, but it just hasn't been happening so far, and uh, the battle for middle stage continues as that dash B, finally a good example for the very first time from Allen in avoiding that uh, side B in order to limit the damage. Oh, and this is just great positioning as you do get Kibo just kind of keeping uh, th this, uh, keeping uh, Kingston at bay, constantly in chase. And he's getting right behind him, looking for some of that distance position as he gets right behind his back. But it's that move in particular, getting the flaming face straight on stage and never expecting it, no recovery at all. And that's going to just put them well at distance. They still have, can be able to get this smash off, just get, finally get a confirmation. And they will continue to just plink at him, jump on a bit of a Goomba stomp, and the same thing's not going to happen again. We're down, down even to two. Yeah, it feels better to be where you are right now. It, uh, it seemed like that just wasn't quite, you know, the recovery that you wanted there from Joker, but you immediately go back at it. The problem is you're back up to 59 before you even blink, and that's what those uh, grab and follow-ups will do. We haven't even seen Incineroar in the juggle ability either, because if you go high, you're still going to catch some of that. But now the back and forth, good positioning there again. I mean, it's been definitely advantage Kingston in that department. He just basically owns middle stage whenever we have this battle at even stocks. King of the ring right now. I mean, any good wrestler knows that you want to make sure you have the microphone in your hand before the mic drop occurs and then constantly berating your opponent and battering them as they just hang out on the ropes. You have to own center stage and that has happened a lot. You get a little extra chip damage. Oh, and just maybe looking for a down spike. It actually ends up going the opposite direction. So, so much extra damage has turned Kivo into a, basically a bowling pin. And it is Alta that are the entirety of a bowling ball being uh, just aiming for a strike looking for a bit of a body slam big spin to put them off center and they will be recovering trying to just just dance around them this is just a wide open ring right now and it's not been a lot of uh it's been very touch and go that's finally a lot of extra damage but kind of the the mid weight that incineroar has has been keeping them pretty steady and finally that seemed like all but inevitable yeah it was uh it took a little bit more time than i was uh liking to see from Kingston. I think the only flaw that I've seen from Kingston so far it, through the first couple of games or almost, you know, towards the end of the second one is the predictability of Joker's recovery hasn't been exposed as much. I know you don't have a whole lot to the kit. You don't have any projectiles to throw out, but I'd like to see a little bit more off the edge in trying to, um, you know, attack them where they're at. And plus, you know, in addition to that, we've seen a good adjustment from Joker uh, bouncing back and finding it. But that'll be difficult to escape from when you are spiked down to the ground. And it is game two in favor of Ulta as well. Oh, man. You know, we were talking about getting exposed based on, like, consistent just repetition. I mean, it was starting to see, like, so if you can turn this into a distance battle, it definitely can expose a bit of the Incineroar play. But the confidence has got to be kind of in the bucket right now when it comes to the Joker play. Kivo has just not been able to find many openings. And even when they do, it seems that uh, Kingston is just in control, ready to bring the fight to him. And always bust out that down B in a huge way just foot stomping on him until he's absolutely off stage. So this is this is going to be a breather moment. Kivo has to come up huge. Otherwise, Kingston is looking at a 3-0 sweep for that first point.
Yeah, when you have to, when you're forced to battle on the ground with Incineroar, you have to be able to uh, have shield timing. Otherwise, that B is going to just wreck through you. We've seen it. Uh, that's for those of you who don't know the the pin that uh, kind of jumps up and then you, you launches you off the other side. How many times have we seen that? It's just been a uh, pretty frequently. And again, a quick jump in. You know, Joker is quick in the air. You can uh, get right back down to the stage and then counter accordingly, but just hasn't been punished at all um in that move so that's one move that has to be exposed otherwise i thought they did a decent job to to get around the incineroar kick the second time but i think i'm with you here um where a change might be needed we'll see if one comes yeah and kingston honestly always uh, hey king kingston right now because they are currently just straight up winning it and so far we have not seen kingston go beneath two stocks that is something of a tell because you, you're just not able to get any ending con confirmation to get them down to the wire. And that's rough because Kivo is that starter kit right now for the side of Allen High School. Need the Eagles to come in clutch. But they obviously this is a best of three of them, of, of the best of sets for this best of five. So this will be the next big one. Can Kivo get them at least down to one stock? That'll be that big momentum turner because that's when the player has to overcome themselves. If you're going to trust in your character that you main to work, you got to be able to find that progression. And, the, and with a rush down, you have to be on the offensive. You can't be backing away. I know you want oh. to have a little bit of spacing. Incineroar is very intimidating, but you have to be on it consistently, which means uh, in and out. And I know you're not much of a hit and run as much, right? But uh, you have a little of those characteristics, but you have to find ways to be able to. I know you're fast in the air. Uh, perhaps try to get that escape. The moment you do that, though, that's when you have to look out for other ways that he can harm you with the juggles. Uh, so pretty difficult to get around, but you have to put on damage early otherwise you're going to find yourself down stocks like we've seen uh constantly i mean both games already 2-0 favor of alta and all of them have had early stock leads uh, honestly it, uh, weirdly enough if i want to go into uh kind of into that grappler zone i might actually sit someone that's going to be sitting heavy into kind of uh just staying on stage i may go to kirby i may even go to midnight just simply for finding disruption and maybe kind of get some of those extra frames that have priority over some of the grabs that you get out of incineroar but i believe that we're going to be having the same characters so it is about belief that it can work can kivo find an ounce of glory in the pit of their stomach to force this one to go forward because it is going to be a reverse sweep necessary by Allen High School out of Kivo to get themselves into a game five for this first roster matchup between these two schools but the Hawks are feeling pretty darn good and of course if you love your players make sure to shout them out into the chat of course and Kingston just looking like he can not cruise control but just play the game they've been playing it from the word go yeah, it's been very strategic, and you love to see that kind of you know, mindset go into this early, and it's been working. You continue with it. Uh, Kivo, again, going with the Joker. and said, uh, joke's on you, hopefully. No, monkey man. <laughs> As we get back to it, and again, you see the Joker pulling a little bit farther off. That was a good strike, though, around the backside of Incineroar, where you have to catch him off guard. Otherwise, you know, you've seen what happened other, uh, on the other side. So this is a start, an ideal Ooh. start, as you continue the juggles to send them off to his edge, edge here, recovery done, but the damage also done. Oh, they're trying to go from zero to stock. A big grab finally with the body slam, and that choke slam so necessary. Gonna go off the ropes and be able to get wow. the clothesline off as well. Even at zero to 96, half of that already gained as Kivo is no longer under control of the ring. They're gonna go find a second form, and they're gonna be burning through that meter. They have to find a confirm right now. They're gonna be able to get a huge kick double kick out using the same oh, thing but they is. fight their feet against them and that's the first time this series we've seen the first stock go against the likes of kingston yeah that was the first time that we've seen the down smash uh being red or the down air rather being red and then uh, exposed because of it so time that exactly right before they were able to get to the ground to get that smash off and get the first stock and now already has 59 on the other side of this stock as well <laughs> then a very strong start again the, the juggles coming right back I almost got the grapple to pull them back down into a combo, but Incineroar's had enough. 
Oh, this is this is some good bonus time, and they know they have the leniency to kind of work with because of the current series, but this is confidence really taking over center stage. Joker is all about the style when it comes to, the, to their play and being able to do it. Oh, but the windmill back fist is able to connect, and yet that doesn't get them completely down. They're able to dodge a quick down A and just toss in a bit of projectiles from distance, trying to be able to use that quick pistol, and then they actually get behind them. We've seen that back kick before. Same thing for Mario players. It can be done by Joker players as well. Kivo is putting on a clinic, and it is still the Kingston who's looking for first stock is it's looking for the recovery. They're able to get all the way back to the edge, and this is just going neck and neck, but Kivo's keeping that first stock alive. Yeah, and Kingston's been just outmatched this time around. It's been outsmarted, and it doesn't look like anything like the first oh two boy. games. But that being said, you're off the edge there. 131%, though, and the last thing you want is for Incinero to get back on it, right? If King Kingston starts getting hot, eventually those hits can matter, right? You get 50% before you can even blink. As the recoveries were a, a bit of a mix up there as well uh, from from this, you know, from this Joker and almost right back at it too with this edge guard 177. Oh. That's perfectly timed. And the side hits here as a forward air able to send them packing and now an entire stock ahead. Hitting them with the down projectiles and just disrupting them. And that disruption has been huge. This is the first time that we've seen two stocks taken away from Kingston. Kivo finally in a place of confidence. They're able to keep them a soft juggle laterally. They don't quite dodge the entirety of that back hammer fist. And now just going up to try and grapple with them. Still the advantage over to Kivo as he does have stock, but he's slowly accumulating a little bit extra. And it's Kingston who's trying to moderate some of that so they don't take too much going into final stock battle. And now from center stage chasing after them that's going to be a nice spike and they're looking to keep them uncomfortable and off corner now on that edge guard 104 percent and alta high school the hawks have been doing so well but kivo's finally woken up it's all about that patience right the time the strike was right in the last few occasions you'll see them back or back out oh my but oh. was trying to dodge and roll but that was a mistake that he fell into the first couple of games again you wow. switched it up and you want to continuously play in the air it's been working but you can't switch now as now it's 121 and we'll try to edge trump if they were on it but we'll just pull themselves up with a grapple and try for this final blow up in the air is incinero that's not where you want to be if you're kingston but back to the edge they go and does get the recovery uh, smash as well this is so rough if you're Kingston because, you yes, you're chipping away and you're looking at getting Kivo down to his last stock, but you're already at 140. That's going to be a nice double foot smash, but they spike him down now with invulnerability, looking for the looking for the ender to be able to just get this one over with, but you do have Kingston all the way off and they're looking for the grabs. They can bring them from zero to stock almost immediately, but it's those up daggers, those tilts that are really forcing Kingston to be in uncomfortable spots. Now from center ring, can the King be able to hold on to the crown they're hanging on thin ice quick smash and finally kivo hits pay dirt this ain't no sweep we're going game four there we go all right so with the um you know the edge it looked a little bit more timid there for kivo but glad to see when they got the center stage they were able to finish the job but i mean when you're down to that last stock and it could be the it mean it could mean the set right if you fall off uh if you are taken early and incinero is known for taking stocks early, earlier than maybe they should because of the percentage they can do uh, so quickly so um a little bit timid there on the edge i'd like to see a little bit more confidence there on the edge to keep the incinerator off but at the end of the day the job is done we head to a game four well job well done Hey, do, well, we're going back to Kalos. We've been there twice, and that looks to be the, a confidence stage for Kivo. Got to see maybe if they're going to stand upon the same one. And honestly, that that open airspace, the early juggling, we saw what it was like zero to ninety percent diff in um, t before it's Kivo totally. even oh, yeah. took damage. Like that was wild, and that's something that Kivo ha can't. Lightning cannot just strike once; it must strike twice for them to be able to get to a game five and Kingston, I mean, he recovered, showing great aptitude for just progressing that fight, but it was one of those, hey, just looking for that great tilt and eventually finding a smash, but it's this is a grind game. Momentum could be shifting, and Kivo would love to be able to grab onto it.
Yeah, Joker's not much, uh, not very well known to be a mix-up character, but I mean, you always have that option no matter what character you're going with, right? With especially when we talk about the edges, or whether it be um, a quicker down to stage uh, situation where you're up in the air. So um, I like the fact that they were switching it up a little bit because it kept the Incineroar guessing, and you saw the B smash, uh, the forward smash used f quite less frequently. It still landed a few times, which got some death punches there. Uh, you you know afterwards but it was much less of an effect there and i imagine the same will apply here if you continue to switch it up um but the patterns cannot be you know exactly the same either because it's going back and forth is not a mix-up you have to continuously keep them guessing and creativity will be everything for that reason here for alan in this first set I mean, you were talking about yourself. You're talking about looking for the uh, the grab combo after just hitting him with the dagger and the pistol from just lower space, and that was honestly what was keeping that aerial recovery from happening for Kingston. It was it was rough, and so we're gonna go a little bit. I want to say flatter of a stage. I think Smashville's uh, upper ceiling for their blast zone is a little bit shorter, and that one will be our next. And I believe that what that means what we are also saying was uh, same fighters. So no character change. Going to Smashville, seeing if this one will be the ender, but Kivo is a player possessed with that want to get this one to a fifth iteration. And this is exactly how they started off the previous Kalos, but finally a little bit of chip damage comes through. Yeah, and now the tides will turn. So it's not exactly that 98 off the bat or whatever we saw in the last game, but it's still a little bit of an advantage here. And Cinderor can get that back very quickly, especially if you are susceptible to, again, that forward smash. And it, now the diving punch there that you see there, the neutral air from Incineroar continuously kicks him off stage at 103. And the recovery was just right back on stage, but they're ready for it as Incineroar with the great timing on the shield. We do have Kivo kind of locked into this edge, and it's really been Kingston kind of zeroed in on making sure they don't get to have any kind of feet on stage, but that position has been traded and realizing that down air to be able to get away from it, away from the dive, that is what ruined Kivo so early on in the previous two games, the two fights, and now looking into this one, they've been able to make those better reads up to tendencies. Oh my goodness, they are grabbing that corner so fast in succession after one another, but that's gonna be a big dive. Actually, that's a big toss. Does he expect the down air just to be able to take a step away, but because of that tendency, you're now recognizing Kingston they're getting a free edge and they can just be oh. able to kind of recover back to it. But both of these players are so high damage and they're both getting juggled. Up smash, forward smash. This Joker is no joke at oh. all. In fact, he's very hot. He's red hot. He is the Smashville hot chicken as he'll send them off. Incineroar sent packing here in the first stock. We'll go into the hands of Alan High. Evo keeping them unbalanced and they were the one dominating right side stage and now they're trying to chip away with what uh, slim advantage they do have slim making more it eventually will go out at 42 percent that's a nice uh takeaway bit of a doggy bag for a snack but it's gonna be up to kingston to level this one out kingston is feeling the vibes change on this stage it's been kivo has been able to get underneath them do some extra juggling and damage nice swing kick but no combos to be found but again Again, a familiar position. It's not one that Kivo has been unable to escape from a huge kick and that's going to be well read and now a down air to be able to bring him back on as we have the transformation. Back to the edge and back to a place where you're comfortable, which is the center of stage. Currently, Incineroar wants to push you out, wants to gain the ground, wants to be grounded, so that way you run right into his B smash and it will chase him down. Joker playing a whole lot more aggressive, more in your face. The timing is correct as well, looking Ooh. a whole lot better and putting up some damage here too after they slid for a long portion there from the Incineroar as it is Kingston right back to it and will launch them off the side. Only about three or so times I've been able to count when that throw has been able to get dodged because you have a tiny frame difference of when you can go straight at him and be able to clap him back off of the uh, the tightrope. So it's now up to Kivo. He's in a rough position. Gotta find this confirmation. Get rid of Kingston off of this edge guard. 146%. Been able to slowly chip him, but it's been so tough to finally grab that stock. They've been able to just kick him away, create that space, and they're constantly just forcing some 
some quick daggers, but that's actually gonna be Kingston. He has denied his recovery. Kibo's been able to make it happen, but the grabs are just working too well. It's looking too much like the first fight, and now they're stuck in a bad position, and Kingston's looking to end it. Yeah, Kibo's trying to draw them off, and actually he gets the job done, except you fell right into the trap, which was the down air back down to the ground and smash, and uh, they hold on. Good time to shield, though. That'll allow a little bit of a juggle, but Incineroar able to battle their way back after it, uh, out of it, just instantly. The shield play back and forth, Incineroar up tight will favor them, and you're in trouble now if you're Kibo. Remember, this is set point now, and you're getting launched across the stage as you're at 136%. Oh, looking for the just the tiniest shield break of diff they're able to find at least one dagger and now a quick double kick as they just slide across stage one grab will end it and then they're trying to get those mighty paws onto kivo kivo staying it down in distance just like any good rogue would good shield dodge and they're able to make another one it's just being trade after trade on the oh. ropes and that'll be the smash close lining them down and dusted it took one extra fight but three one goes set one first points over to alta well, just as we started, it's the same way we ended, which is that B smash, the forward smash there from Incineroar launches you off the edge. It is, after all, a very good uh, ender, if you will. And so you want that smash at the very end at the high percentages, but that damage is just so constant in your face. Uh, uh, you know, Kivo did a good job to handle themselves and keep a little bit of space and time those kills or time those spots, but just could not quite find their way around it at the end of the day as Incineroar or right back on it uh, to to get the smashes in. The shield timing was impeccable there towards the end to battle back from that one. Because remember, the early start was favoring Kibo there for a minute. It really was. Honestly, Kibo, it was, it, we, we see those in competitive moments of just the slimmest difference between uh, success and failure of a, a win and a loss and being able to just find how you can be able to maneuver around. And Kivo looked like they were about to make that that transition into kind of a game five form, but uh, it was it was Kingston. They had too much of a lead, and then honestly, just looked like they had a more balanced kind of approach to that set. I like the creativity out of Kivo, but they just couldn't be too inventive. Yeah, they were uh, in it to win it for sure. Um, we're able to switch. Uh, nothing really just able to just keep playing the way that you're trying to play overall and it, it really favored them towards the end of it so that makes that means the hawks went at 3-1 again wasn't a perfect sweep though and we move into completely different uh, fighters as well so we're going to see uh, a couple on the other side as well let's check and see who we have fighting on the other end uh for alta it will be andrew on the allen side we'll have uh ash so andrew versus ash we'll see what characters they uh pick here but it'll be after this quick ad whether it's to play your favorite game To play for school pride. Or for the thrill of competition. Play competitively with Play Versus. Visit PlayVS.com today for more information. Set two set to take place, Hail Monkey Man. We uh, uh, might have the characters locked in here momentarily. So when we get back to it, you have the advantage here in the sets for Alta. But it wasn't as uh, clean as you imagined it might be there. The 3-0 was peeking its head there for a minute. Uh, does it give you confidence rolling into your second fight? Or is this basically neutral ground fighting for just another set to begin things? I mean, I, I think it's just a fairly neutral ground. But uh, I, I am going to be head over heels right now because... Because I love myself some Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong is such a fun character to play around. And I say that from a position as a player that uses them to troll everyone. So those bananas, you get the, the, the neutral tumbles, especially. I love being able to just take away, especially from kind of these zoning type characters like Samus, just getting them out of sorts, especially making them slip on the banana. And the combos are so good. And in case you guys did not know, it is going to be from Alta. Uh, it's going to be Andrew that is hanging out on the Diddy Kong. And opposite of them is going to be Ash that's currently on the Samus. 
Yeah, that's right. And right now being dominated, unfortunately, at the 156 mark. But how are you supposed to charge your your shot whenever you're constantly slipping on bananas and getting um, getting kicked? So uh, <laughs> just a bit of annoyance here trying to battle through. It's hard to zone when that nuisance is just after you. 3.1% is already taking a stock. Oh, my goodness. Look, I, Diddy Kong is made for kind of these short hop thrills. I mean, you're going to be looking for kind of the, the big build. I mean, this this is a, a, a character as old as time as N64. You have the up B to be able to push Diddy Kong into uncomfortable situations. Then you have the rocket recovery. And then using these soft mines as they just kind of bounce around, looking for a big beam uh, build up as well. And then forcing pressure across the stage. It is all about the arsenal, but much more versatile than whenever you kind of look at uh, uh, characters like Snake. Because you can be able to get into fist fights just like this. And the up B to, oh, to confirm? All right. I didn't think Diddy Kong was that hurt. But here we go. First stock taken. Yeah, it will definitely one of the lightweights. So you get you pack your punch, right? But you have to make sure that your uh, bag has not been packed the other way, right? <laughs> that you're not getting <laughs> plugged. And so the charge shot almost uh, causing even more damage here as the catch up is very real. I mean, uh, just under 80% they're trying to catch up from. That's a good start though, as they're able to launch into it. And the forward air did a little bit of damage too. Trying to catch them on the edge there um, with that projectile, with that uh, little side too. And that's a few times and off the edge of the stage too with that grenade a couple of times try to guard that edge but good timing there on the edge recovery although still in trouble and sam is right back in this my goodness it is ash who is having a day here in that second stock Look, it's great to be able to see it because on that uh, initial stock, I was thinking that Diddy Kong was a little bit too much to handle here on Battlefield, but you do actually have the big grabs coming through and making great use of zoning off of these mines. Look at how to work through all these projectiles. You had a great recovery from out of Andrew, and now they're facing off against a mine when they recover, and then if they get around the mine over the edge, they still have to be able to face off against Ash. Great rocket jump to be able to move around them, but the down A is going to be able to find them looking for some extra charge that's a quick up a but that is full stock and 104 to 130 this is bad position right now for andrew as they're just trying to be able to get ash down to their final and right now it doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to get them there unless they pull off something big yeah, Ash has gotten them right where they wanted to go, right? They already did in yep. by. There you go. You're out of here. So this started very differently, right? It, it seemed like there was no chance for Ash as Andrew had that hot start. But after that, the gimmick kind of died a, a little bit, right? It kind of fell <laughs> off a little bit, right? It, it seemed like it wasn't as effective as it once was earlier. So that screams for a change here, right? Because there are so many ways that you can counter a Samus. Uh, and it just didn't seem like Diddy Kong was the answer there late. I think that comes for, we're going to be looking at another uh, stage. I, if I know Absolutely. anything about trollish type Diddy Kong players, as they would say, no, 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 that's the stage's fault. No big deal. There was a lot of extra hopping <laughs> that had to happen. We're going to okay. put that banana down in the right place. Right. <laughs> it's, look, 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 we're going to get there. Okay, look, Diddy Kong is top tier, S tier, if I've ever seen a, a character be so. Of course, but yes. It's, but also, that was when I had two bananas, and they nerfed us to one banana. So, oh, yeah, yeah look, I look. Look, you take me on Super Smash Brothers Brawl of uh, Final Destination with two bananas, and you go from zero to life like that. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not enough variety, in my opinion. <laughs> it's with the Diddy Kong. You might have Diddy <laughs> Kong love. I did not uh, love that pick uh, at the very end. It was very repetitive, and Sam has caught on to it and was able to just lure them into the traps, right? The grenades were there, too. So even if you got back to the edge, you were going to be blasted off of it uh, in the, into the side. So that's why the percentage added up so quickly. If you wondered why the tides were turned, well, Diddy Kong's already susceptible to things like that, and plus didn't do enough creativity. Creativity? Creativity? Oh Not <laughs> enough creativity is what I'm trying to get after, and that was uh, their ultimate downfall in that one. Yeah, it really was, and especially because... Uh, uh the initial burst that you get out of Diddy Kong, especially because there is kind of a wind up that works with Samus. I mean, you're building up meter and then of course, just be able to create some space. Diddy Kong, once they're kind of locked down as floated as they are, when you get damage to them, it becomes somewhat one dimensional. Now I say that, but there's some 
really fun combos that you can work off, especially if you're able to get the grab and slap. Look, not many people know, unless you're just not playing Diddy Kong, which you should, that when you get that grab, you get on the face and you slap them to remind them who they are. But <laughs> I did see Ash really take control when it came to the rolling landmines. And so it does look like that we're going to be seeing same characters may switch up stages here in just a moment. And I love myself some some good back kicks and looks like that we are going to go to that third stage. So yeah, I, I like this idea. Yeah, the back hits, the back kicks are definitely where it's at for for Diddy Kong. It was weird seeing how quickly that that game went, just simply because both of these players are known for you know more of bait the men defensive play. I know Diddy Kong obviously has a lot in the weapons wall to do damage, but uh, it was so much quicker than I thought it was going to be. And again, in this first stock, we see 111 Ooh. damage between the two right off the bat, and they end up battling here for the center stage. It also looks like they're playing a mini game of my banana. I like, no, this is my banana. No, this is my banana. And so they just kind of stole it back and forth from one another. But monkey in the middle, I think, is what you're after. <laughs> hey, look, there's, there's a monkey on the lateral side, too. Okay. But there's also one that's uh, pretty much uh, gone. They have to return with a clone of themselves as first stock is taken. And Ash has been a, on a warpath. They really took that first stock loss personally and haven't given it up since. No, that was the first kind of usage of the RPG that I've seen, but it didn't really land. It's very difficult to choose between the homing one or the one that it launches very quickly towards the Diddy Kong, because any time taken against the Diddy Kong, well, you oh. get this. You get the punches, you get the kicks, and up in the air they go. But again, even though the percentage is even, obviously the clear advantage here has got to be Ash. It's, it definitely is for right now because they continue to build up all that bonus streak. And then on the up B, it is so disruptive using the entirety of their full arsenal to their advantage nearly landing yet another energy beam onto them off of the buildup. And then, you know, you get the banana grab, but you're just waiting for the landmine off of a secondary, uh, off a neutral dodge. And this is 133%. Look, okay, I love me a Diddy Kong. Maybe we are looking at just kind of execution being uh, better uh, accomplished by Ash, but also you got to have the same for Diddy Kong. They're hanging off edge to get away from the invulnerability. This may end up 3-0 just based on the damage output, but that's a high standard to take. And you're looking at the RPG just like you talked a moment ago and they're just putting that in to Andrew's face. Oh my, and when you're landing those uh, charge shots, that's when you know that you've been doing things right against the Diddy Kong. As you know, the fight for the banana is never a good sign for the Diddy Kong, so I think that's something that Andrew needs to take into consideration here. We'll get that one stock at least to pull them back within one, but at the end of the day, you're on your last straw, and that's not good as the juggling continues here. Look at oh. the methodical push upwards into the air. Buggin' is the right name here in game because that's what they've been doing to this Diddy Kong. Then you bugging, you bugging out. You're about to um, be a bug. I'm about to squash you. And right now, it is a bad place for Andrew. They oh, could get man. smashed without wow. even a final smash. That's just a sweeping kick. And as lightweight as Diddy Kong is, that's going to be enough. As Samus is able to get themselves in a great position, Ash doing a ton of fantastic work. And that's a 2 0. Oh, this is something that Allen High School really needs right now to get the Eagles back into the series. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about how they could potentially, you know, drop that second set uh, very easily if they weren't careful. So they get the first two, a very, very leading side. And I don't think that, you know, Andrew's done a, a whole, you know, too much currently uh, in order to b combat that. It's been very quick through the stocks. Yeah. So now we, we talk about it every single time between, but like now is the time to actually switch, right? Right. <laughs> Just with how right. dominant that looked. I look, I, I am as prideful as any Diddy Kong player out there. I'd switch. I, look, at this point, like, I would actually try and troll even harder and I'd go Kirby purely <laughs> so I could be able to be like, you know what? I want that too. G give me that. I, I am the most petty, smashed player you're ever going to meet. Uh, I can tell. <laughs> I just like talking to you. We haven't even played yet. We need you after this. We man. will. It's, it's hyping me up currently. It's <laughs> no, been great. I'm that guy that makes sure that you're not like, we haven't even confirmed that you've made it out of the blast zone and I'm taunting as hard as I can. And sometimes it'll even be Sonic and going, you're too slow. Just you're, you're, you're not going to light me bear. Like it, uh, yeah, smash I, ends friendships much the same way that monopoly does. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And from what I typically play, I mean, you already counter me with that annoyance. Anyway, so there's <laughs> not much I can do. Maybe we should learn Samus. Cause apparently that's the ticket here. As we do see the switch up, it's pay Lutina. They come in with uh, next and uh, I respect it hundred percent. 
Yeah. Love that. Okay. Love if, if you're looking for kind of a midweight brawler, and that's exactly what they're looking for right now, you're going to be able to get some of that, um, actually a lot of that out of Palutena. Now, the, the key thing, though, is that when Samus is able to create that kind of distance, that's when everything kind of plays against Palutena because she's there to just really take control of the mid stage. But when they're, they're racking and stacking this much extra damage against them, it gets real bad real fast but we ain't bugging out just yet as ash is you know they're, they're able to build up that meter against them and they do have the charge shot ready to go oh great counter and they're gonna be able to juggle them up yeah constantly after them with the nair is the um you know palutena as the switch up doesn't Ooh. seem to be doing a whole lot especially when samus is just on fire currently trying to get that rpg to land but nothing doing here so they'll have to find creative ways to get back on stage luckily they're able to but the timing not right is um again they just try to keep them off stage the back and forth battle pursues and uh, very similar to what we saw before where the percentages go very high very quickly yeah pelotena is one of those kind of very interesting uh sort of characters that you will eventually get this one confirmed out as andrew does drop their first stock and some of the grass be able to immediately get them up to 35 and you see the aggression out of ash they're not letting them sit for too long because when they get some of those magic tps it is so tough to dodge around that's when they really take care of you from well off stage the teleport up and dry oh looking for the up kick and they're trying to be able to put a charge shot on target as well the mines are playing such a deterrence for recovery and alan high school gonna be cheering loud right now but that's gonna be first stock taken away but not before they get the palatina up to 100 yeah, and now it's to battle back. There's an airs constantly over and over again. If you can't escape the up air either, that's difficult combo to escape from. So they'll toss them up in the air to finally gets away and we'll get some charge shots ready up and going. That was well timed too. Oh boy. So, and now the combination and the smash there is sending them off the edge of the stage. Oh my goodness, it is, it's been rough seas sailing for Andrew as they've been trying to change it up. They went back to the presumed main. This is one of the ones that we were told about for anecdotal uh, evidence of how well these players uh, are practiced. And Palutena uh, seems to be at least a little bit more versatile to, uh, to force Ash to work. But Ash has been going to the office. They've been putting in memos and telling you all about it. They're going to sweep, kick, and oh, that smash does not actually finish it off. I was thinking that was an early percentage confirmation as they're gonna be kicking them from stage right stage left they've left the stage and the building 3-0 sweep for the eagles we're going to set three Ash just different. Uh, I mean, how do you combat that, right? CMS is typically um, pretty, you know, pretty defeatable in certain aspects, but it just held to it, right? Zone perfection, right? And was able to uh, launch in time a lot of the counterattacks pretty, pretty frequently. So when you're after it consistently with the two choices that we saw, um, it just wasn't enough to do uh, damage enough to launch them off. I know Samus can play up to about 120, 150 before you're truly in danger, especially after the two choices that they were against. But still, we're able to just work in early damage and was able to finish the job whenever the stocks got down to just one. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a fun one too because I mean, you you see the the I guess focus that ash was able to bring to the team i know that they they play separately they have their individual fights but that's what really is a reminder that these teams are here playing for a regional championship the best of the west to see what these two teams can find and allen high school they dug deep into their pocket they found in the form of a, a championship player in ash and that has given them an extra look now we had a 3-1 series in our first set we had a 3-0 sweep in the second one this next one, it's all that's left. We've got Kirito against Talmadge. And this is this is going to be very sweaty because this first game is going to have a lot of tone to set. It will be. I mean, it's been the battle of the birds, right? The eagle is able to recover after, you know, the Hawks were uh, had that hot start. So I'd like to see a battle of, like, I don't know, Falco versus an S, Something like air <laughs> battle here currently. I feel like that'd be very fitting here to see it. But, yeah, it's very, obviously... 
it goes without saying, right? Everything on the line here. So this battle, again, is of the third players from these high schools if you're relatively new. So all of it rests in their hands, right? And you run the risk of, like, if you have and you are the third player for your high school, if it's a 2-0, you don't even get to play. So you have to uh, find the right place to play your players. I love this, uh, this kind of uh, battle here. And now it comes down to who did you pick to be your third? Yeah, it comes down to the anchor, and the anchor needs to be your sure thing. Now, quite often you're saying, all right, well, if we're going to get a series done, we need to make sure we put our best in front. I see that a lot when it comes to, when it comes to crew battles, but when you see this one, you want to make sure that this is a very studied, very experienced player because they're going to go in picking hard, trying to just finish out this series. They do not want to have it go long. It must be finished, I think, in three, but... Let's go into it. We will see a Palutena and a Snake. So, interesting picks all the way around as we will be going into our third fight. Alta and Allen, the Hawks and the Eagles. Let's get into it because I'm interested of how this Snake play is going to counter into a Palutena. Yeah, the Snake that we've seen previously uh, was to combat something completely different. And for me, you know, when you're trying to escape the Nair here of um, Palutena, it's a little bit of a different different vibe i think it's a decent pick here but i'm not sure if it's the totally right one but they do have the 20 percent advantage so what do i know <laughs> honestly <laughs> i mean and th the difference that we saw before is that i think that we saw a counter pick of snake picked in uh and trying to be able to find some kind of value breaking down walls when working against a steve it really wasn't the, um, a more favorite situation i think the recovery of both of these it's one's a way more telegraphed and one obviously has a quick teleport and so you need some some distance damage being done especially off of that flame bolt that's happening right now it this is a lot of good damage i mean a lot of uh, players kind of see palutena getting and cutting that distance and snake is struggling right now to do the exact same as talmage just can't be able to narrow it down yeah they uh, seem to be playing at this range and happy with it uh, they seem to when they do end up getting in a little bit of damage is done 134 is very dangerous but uh, that just seems like multiple hits here from palutena Ooh. and uh but that's going to be the multitude of damage, high end damage, by the way, from the snake to grab that first stock. C4 pack and done. Put a grenade down. And I like the ideas. You're just kind of putting some extra gadgets everywhere to be able to punish whenever they're not moving. And that's just patient play. And right now it is under duress for Talmage as they're just working against Kirito, who's come in clutch, being able to lay them down. That is two stocks here, Bear. Still hanging at 100. They were untouched for that entire previous one. Yeah, that was out, absolutely outstanding. Explosive, if you will. Very <laughs> fitting for the snake as they just keep him at a distance. That C4 has been deadly, and you have to snuff those out. You have to figure it out because, like you said, it can be predictable. In fact, like there's legitimately a timer there. It's not like you have uh, you know, re remote mind there for snake. So you have to constantly be aware of that, which I get. It takes some extra thought process, but if you go through the motions and you play the right way, eventually you will crack this puzzle that has been uh, a strong sting. Oh my goodness. They've been doing neutral spins to be able to keep the grenades nearby. But again, look, it's just catching Talmage off guard. And then when they have them, they're actually doing a double throw. Big smash. That doesn't quite confirm. Looking for the RPG to land. They're looking to just actually get out of distance, to get away from the magic. And that we won't have a 3-0 into this first yeah. fight. But it's an uphill battle. And Talmage, they, they have two stocks to go. And honestly, Kirito looks like they're in control. I was talking about needing your most experienced player to be your last one. Allen High School really showcasing that. Yeah, they have. That was a quick start. I thought it would, for a minute it was going to be that way. I thought it was going to be a three-stock win, which I haven't seen in a very long time. But, it, I mean, hanging in here, right, you have to take it a little bit by a little bit and take your wins. You have to be in and out here. Oh. But I, I'm, I'm ready to call it here if they can... They don't continue this way, though. Hold that thought. Again, just the shield timing, too. As they get back on stage, eventually you feel like it's going to hit. But still, I mean, the distance is has been done. Oh. Finally, a grenade lands, but nothing else doing here for Snake. Finally, the down will send them, launch them off stage, and a win for Snake. 
Short hop, down kick, get it done. But, you know, uh, it's not quite snake eater out of Pelotena. They simply have to be able to get around the Spec Ops Master, who, honestly, Kirito, throwing hands and a bit more explosives than I think exist in my state for this upcoming 4th of July. So just <laughs> tearing them apart. So uh, game one looked like, just like we were talking about, that it could have gone 3-0 in a snap instead. We do see at least find one extra stock but it was a struggle and a half for talmage who really wasn't ready for the barrage that they were facing yeah they eventually started figuring it out piecing it together but at that point it was too late you were down by two and a half stocks quite frankly and um i, I mean there's a, a queer path for a turnaround here you just ha cannot allow t yourself to be susceptible to the many uh different objects that are going to are looking to blow you up so uh just tip <laughs> tiptoe around those right and you'll be perfectly fine easier said than done we'll see if they can get it done it's it's, it's also great item management too because when you have yeah. characters that have to rely on so many projectiles i mean you see it you know not as often with diddy kongs like i talked about but i mean <laughs> very much so when it comes to snake because so i mean barely uses uh, uh actual on body melee tactics they use so much of the rpg c4 and grenades when you see like Watch that neutral spin. They actually keep that grenade nearby, and then they set up another one, and then they take both and wham, wham, just to throw them out. And then, of course, on their uh, neutral aerial recoveries, just chucking them out. Even if they get grabbed, then there's going to be a little kind of a birthday present surprise left behind behind Palutena. So and a fun way to play definitely kind of a nuisance because you cannot generate longstanding combos against it. And a lot of the, you know, battle against Palutena is watching out for the Nair, playing around the Nair, right? It's very common, but you can't approach with it, especially not if you have a snake across the uh, across the way, you know, staring <laughs> you down with all those nades that you have to maneuver around. So you have to rely a little bit less on the Nair there. If you do go end up going back with the Palutena, um, if you have to find ways to get in first, right? Find that initiation, and then eventually you can get to work and uh, put on some percentage, which again, like we said, happened a little bit late uh, in that one, but you can't let it slide here. This second, uh, this second battle here, this second game in this set will be ever so important. It is definitely the turning point here in this series. Oh, yeah, we're going to be going into this. And I think that if you don't see an even series, may see characters switch up. But for right now, the, this is just playing, uh, playing coy, playing uh, into it. So you do have that third kind of middle architecture going to these platforms. I think that gives the tiniest diff of advantage over the Palutena simply because we're not gonna be seeing some of those more neutral recovery drops on some of that nade, uh, the nade work that we saw out of Kirito. But he's gonna do it just the same as he's dropping a couple and so much of the arsenal gets ripped out from that edge guard. Yeah, the snake is doing such a great job here uh, with you know, the Kierto, Kierto has been doing a great job of just finding the lag, right, within Pelotina's uh, moves and has been in working it, except for this time around. We'll be tossed up and out of the stage to uh, start it off. A much hotter start there for Talmadge. Yeah, and that one I think was like 80 percentile, maybe 90 before they just get him to float away. So uh, going for the neck break and lay him down to rest. And then, oh, the rollback recovery. What a read to be able to find him and to up smash him. But we have not seen this finished off yet. Palutena, because of being a midweight, can kind of live for a bit longer and having to navigate throughout this stage with all of the projectiles everywhere else. Looking for a bit of a shield bash as they rush over. You do have the hovercraft, uh -oh. uh -oh. and now they're oh, no. juggling them. Do they find them well off blast zone? No, they are still there. And just shielding up, trying to protect themselves if they are going to get sparked. Great teleport as well. The movement has been much better this time around. The up air snipes were strong too, and Snape could not DI their way out of that one as they do get back to the edge here. But again, a very hot advantage. But Snake couldn't end it here. The teleport will put them back on stage and didn't see that either. But I mean, up smash will send you back in. And it's still 112 done on Snake in the second bit here so these two two stocks is still advantaging but snake looking to get some of that back here with up to 42 is Pelina. Ooh, and they just kind of bonk heads on that one too <laughs> i swear they're just kind of both headbutt oh and you will see the forward dive tackle out of uh, uh kirito so just seeing what uh talmage is able to kind of crack up and then the back kick 
Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, Bear. Wow. The beginning of this fight Early. looks looks like it was all in uh, 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 Talmadge's corner. It looked like everything was in their control, and Kirito has been able to fight back so strong. Yeah, it's it was so quickly how it happened as well. But uh, back to even ground here for the most part, as you're able to land one as well. Now a distance, the snake continues to try and work them away to the edge, and back down they go. We'll be able to land back here, and now the movement doesn't seem as important as they try to get around this one. But again, it'll be difficult to do here. Talmage in trouble as they continue to try and get to middle stage. Eventually, the teleport will work to get them there. And the Snake had to bat, do that hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is not exactly their strength. Uh, they were trying to dive through every uh, firework that exists, looking for a grab as well. They're going to be able to find another one, and now looking just to punish them out. They dodge around. Big sport smash! And wow. that'll be the second second one over to Kirito. My goodness. Okay. Everything was going Talmadge's way until it just straight up wasn't. Yeah, that was a strong start yet again, and then just lofted, launched off the, off the side. So that was, uh, again, Allen coming in hot. This high school, again, not the best first step, but when it comes to the second and third, have had a keen advantage uh, moving into this third set, the all-important set here, again, uh, between these two. The Eagles flying higher and higher as we get along. Yeah, and uh, if you want a, an impression of what how that previous fight started, it was kind of gone. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna be going yep. over it. It's, so this, so this is it. This is all the marbles for the Western Regional, and it's gonna be going down to the wire because now you have to reverse sweep. You do not have a balance of one to one. You. Have in control if you are uh, uh, Kirito because you want to finish this off. You want to give the Eagles that big championship win. You got to be able to just get it done because you, your ability to recover, this has been a inspired sort of performance out of the snake. Yeah, it has been. And, you know, playing at that range is ever so important, but also being able to read, right? When the teleport uh, comes through has been very impactful and being able to turn at the right times and, and land those punches or land those smashes. We saw a couple of up smashes that sent uh, Palutena flying in and out pretty early too, right? The percentage is down below 100% when you're seeing those uh, type of numbers from Snake with the C4 and otherwise. That's definitely a good sign there as... They continue to try and close out here. They'll have three chances to do that. Yeah, got a long time. And we did see the first one that kind of went a little bit weird whenever we were just trying to see if the series would complete. And that did go to an epic game four. But this is all the marbles. This is the best of the West and seeing if you're just part of the rest instead. So can Kirito be able to finish this one off, get it done if they go with Snake? Or if we are going to see maybe a change up, I think that we're going to be saying the same kind of fight because you got to think Talmadge was in control. We've also seen on some of their scouting reports that maybe they're going to uh, bring in a Donkey Kong, but it will not be Donkey Kong. It's actually going to be maybe a change up of the opposite direction. Uh, you're going to see them going over to Richter. So uh, that, that's an interesting change. Yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, Donkey Kong just won't fly here, to be honest. And <laughs> Apparently I like, not. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like the fact that you're able to uh, to make a change here. Although, you know, as a, a zoner here, they're looking to, to play that control. Maybe they saw something where it was, you know, their ability to zone that was helping them out quite a bit in that run that they were able to have and perhaps maybe causing a little bit of that space spatial uh, room to work with will help them out. Uh, either way, I definitely didn't see this coming. It was uh, a bit from left field, but you love to see the switch up. Perhaps it'll catch them off guard too. And maybe Allen will be left the one kind of scratching their heads after this. I mean, you do have Richter known for utilizing some of those extra gadgets to be able to get rid of all the minions of Dracula. So maybe they can bring all of that extra stuff from Castlevania and be able to make it work. But it's going to be tough. You have the chain, you got the flail, you got the boomerang. You maybe have a chance to be able to kind of disrupt some of this gameplay. But we go into our first, and I see them trying to be able to kind of change up this distance. Less magic, more just hands-on combat. It's, it's going to depend on really if they can 
can work through this because you gotta be ready setting two grenades at the tip and tail of of uh of uh talmage right as they went to sleep oh that's just rude and so far it's still zero percent damage as they're working up to 99. and watch them edge guard with all no of way. these explosives the projectiles continue to rain down and the timing on these edge recoveries it just haven't been there the ledge recoveries have been iffy only 12.6 percent alan feeling it now as it has been a Kierto that has been absolutely livid and not giving a chance. They've been relentless. Oh my goodness. This has been this has been rough if you are out to trying to see if you can continue this momentum that you found in the first set. And that's been just non-existent. And now looking for the change up and you have the big axe throw being able to poke through as well as you send the chain and flail. And this is some of that poke mentality that we were hoping to see. Richter is a very kind of versatile character because they have the same level of weapon spam. It's just old, <laughs> archaic. It's medieval versus the high tech that we get out of Snake. Exactly, right? The projectile is the same. I think the only true difference is the grab or the chain rather uh, there from Richter, but it has like the same distance as, you know, the moves from Snake. It's, it's really funny to see the back and forth. And all right, we're even stocks here, but still 46.5%. Make it 57 as they're off the edge and 10 by 10 they're trading. <laughs> this, this is looking like you and me, uh, brothers at arms, as well as sharing the same brain cell. We are Z shielding as fast as we can, standing right in front of one another. But, but you're actually very close to a shield break on the side of Kirito, and they're going to be careful, or else they're going to have a big stun, and that could turn into a mega smash up on the other way, using that boomerang to be able to break off and get the, some of those chain setups. But a nice up A, and now they're just trying to drive and punish. And again, once the edge guard begins, it's very tough to break through and yet they're able to do so but only by a hair thin distance yeah it's a lot different than what we saw in the first ledger guy where it was just you know projectiles being thrown out it was grenade after grenade landing i believe uh -oh. and now you see the switch up here as we'll see the same kind of continuation very predictable there but yet at the same time talman just continues to stay alive here in this second stock and force it late into it oh my goodness okay all right both in high uh, uh, doubles uh, two stocks High percentage. This could come down to just a quick back air, which we've seen a lot of recently. Oh, that is such a a nice arc off of the axe to be able to get that one straight on the edge and that actually allows them that distance to work against the snake good recovery finding on the chain whip they're actually going to use the boomerang to give themselves a great uh bit of spacing as they throw it from off stage bring it on back and purposely dodge around to the down kicks dodge and that's gonna be a nice uppercut still right side blast zone trying to get around chain and whip and they can't move beyond the flail another boomerang coming through and we're if you added them up we're at 310 percent damage between looking for a grab but they're able to dodge on the counter nice uppercut yeah that's you can't rest right it's just constant movement and it, it's been talmage that's gotten the advantage here as of late to, to constantly keep them at a distance but also avoid the constant perpetual just throwouts from this kit but they're up both above 150 in fact above 165 currently now it's done but you're at 171 you imagine the comeback is right now good job to avoid it currently but yeah you're gonna be laid down you're gonna be tossed out we're down to even at one stock championship point right now for allen high school as if you need any more pressure alta high school is looking at their anchor and telling talmage they got to be able to get this one done now they got the current percent diff and that's gonna be a slow throw on the boomerang just forcing timing to be part of the mindset that kirito has to work through it was much the same way good chain whip boomerang out lots of extra speed trying to play against time you do have the flamethrower to be able to just at least stall them a dive forward and the boomerang is playing paying such dividends right now z hard z shield just to wait him out and this has just become a game of numbers and who will finally be able to cut that distance yeah it's all about shield timing when do you bring it down when are you gonna launch out your next projectile and uh -oh. catch them sleeping they're on the edge now this will be difficult they oh, always no. seem to find themselves vulnerable on this side but they do get around it here and get to kick them off the side and now snake has to recover themselves they try to play a bit of your own medicine here on the ledge guard 
Oh, the boomerang is going to take away that mid space, so they can't quite jump up. The grenade dropped down off of a great cancel. Looking for the up kick. This is a dangerous position for Talmadge. He's able to get around. He has the he has the whip out, and now waiting on that up B recovery, and then throwing out the flames. He's got him in the oh, grab. No. He's going to toss him away. RPG not going to contact, but now he has to get through the spam. He comes up with the whip, creates so much distance. More grenades and boomerangs. It's medieval versus modern day. Who has the better weaponry? just trying to be able to fight through the full kit and they're doing it from distance it is an absolute shootout here the, as they're just coming down to the wire the clutch recovery and the clutch attack was so key there as oh. they toss it off and a good recovery there are two long range nades oh. and being taken care of launches them off of the rpg and that will do it allen and the eagles the varsity smash team will take the grand champion the national championship what a finish I did not see that one coming. I thought that they were just <laughs> safe. It snuck in right into their wow. gut. Allen High School, one of the biggest high schools in the entirety of the state of Texas, is going to take home a big win here out on the Western region. Congratulations. You guys take home the Play versus Cup Championship. Wear, wear that crown proudly. It was a fight well earned best in the west and also shout out to canon mcmillan in the chat saying uh can we get next please get next? <laughs> love that hey listen this team dug deep for sure kirito with the anchor and when it seemed like elta after their first matchup apparently they wanted to start strong right because they did have the advantage a pretty clear one there to kick things off we thought maybe it would head in that direction for multiple but that second set was pretty clear cut there for allen and you could see about the same with the third. Obviously, that last game was very close, but it still ends in a 3 0 nonetheless. I mean, I almost wish we'd seen that as the uh, second character pick. Kind of go away from the Palutena, recognize that you're being bullied a bit too much, and then switch over to Richter. I mean, I haven't seen a Richter that good in a long time. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe never. Honestly, I tried to play some of those Castlevania characters, and I was like, eh, I can't do it. That old versus new, the old guard versus the current, that was cool. I, I love seeing that, yeah. but it still goes the way of the Eagles. Hey, they were able to take the championship. Hey, that's a, that's a nice uh, title to, to take home. The Eagles flying high. It is Allen High, in fact, that will get the national championship. Congratulations to them as they are to the West Region. 2023 play versus cup national champions for Super Smash Ultimate. What a day it has been. Hail Monkey Man, again, I appreciate you joining me in the booth. And a big thank you goes out to everybody involved, the play versus team, who has been absolutely amazing in the production crew as well. Hail Monkey Man, final thoughts. Hey, you know what? Uh, love seeing me some esports. Love seeing some championships, and everyone showed up today. Love to be able to see it, and of course, go out there and uh, play some games. It's been a great time. Absolutely, go ahead, go out, play them. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Take care.